need to get to San Jose St. Bonaventure Hospital. He's a hero unlike any other. It changed. Dr. Sean Murphy. The boy's ECG changed. A brilliant visionary surgeon. Lower amplitude means lower voltage. Who just happens to have autism and savant syndrome. The veins in the boy's left arm are popping. His condition leads to strokes of medical genius. His, his heart, it's his heart. His heart is fine. But also moments of awkwardness and alienation. Behave yourself or you'll be removed from the building. Then there's the skepticism and prejudices of a hospital's board and staff. And you generally thought that this board wouldn't reasonably have any doubts about hiring a surgeon who's been diagnosed with autism. Yes, he has autism, but he has spatial intelligence and he sees things and analyzes things in ways that we can't even begin to understand. This may be the first time a doctor with a severe disability is the lead of a primetime drama, but it's certainly not the first time such a doctor has put on scrubs in real life. Imagine if your doctor couldn't see. Dr. Tim Cordes of Wisconsin is blind, but he's able to identify irregular heartbeats without a stethoscope because of his advanced hearing. What if your doctor couldn't hear? Dr. Philip Zazov of Michigan is deaf, but he's able to use a stethoscope because he's hypersensitive to vibration. He also reads lips to communicate. This locks in the knees. They're both locked in place. Or how would you react if you thought your surgeon was unable to stand over the operating table? I have a belt in here, which keeps my... Before you answer, meet Dr. Chris McCullough of the Morristown Medical Center in New Jersey. Wow. His $20,000 standing wheelchair is a feat of engineering. Well, I didn't know, Chris, but you're pretty tall. I'm 6'3", which actually that becomes more of a challenge. Enabling this third-year general surgery resident to do something so remarkable, only a handful of paralyzed doctors in the country can do it. Stand. So how many times a day do you do this? Uh, whew, five, six times a day. Chris had always wanted to be a surgeon, but his medical career was almost over before it began. I had already been accepted to medical school. What happened? I was standing up from being seated at my desk, and I slipped, and my whole body went up, and I came crashing down, uh, six foot three, 200 pounds of me, on the edge of a thick glass coffee table. My head snapped backwards, and I broke the vertebra in my neck. I knew when I couldn't move my legs that something was wrong in the back of my mind, I was yelling, please don't let me be paralyzed, I'd rather be dead. Really, you actually thought that? Oh yeah, I thought my life was over. The one-time avid skier underwent months of rehabilitation, strengthening his body, rebuilding his resolve. When I got to rehab, they said, you're probably never gonna walk again. And I said, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. Chris made it through medical school and eventually learned that his so-called disability actually plays to his advantage. He comes into the room at a level that's more at the patient's level. They can see him and they can speak with him. There's you mean at, 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 yeah, literally? at eye level, right, because, oh. and that helps a lot. In fact, one study suggests patients perceive doctors to be giving them more quality time when the doctor is sitting during consults instead of standing. So you think the fact that he's lower actually really helps? Yeah. I think that uh, the fact that he's lower, um, and, it, and a lot of it is his innate personality. But right now, it's all about Chris's skill as a surgeon, not his bedside manner. We watch as he heads in to assist on a double mastectomy, supported by his hydraulic wheelchair. It levels the playing field. I can get to everybody's level and get to the table just like everybody else. I don't want to be treated any differently than anybody else or ask for any different accommodations or ask for anyone to do things differently. So this thing allowed your dreams to come true? It did. It absolutely did. You look a lot better than you did last week. Lately. I think it certainly gives me the opportunity to connect with patients. They look and they can see very visibly that I've been in the bed. I know what it's like. You're a nice kid, and you're obviously very smart. But you don't belong here. How many times was that said to you? Oh, more than I can count. Tyler Sexton's journey from patient to doctor has been one long uphill battle. He suffers from spastic diplegia. It's a form of cerebral palsy, a chronic neuromuscular condition that affects balance as well as movement below the waist. Good morning, how are you? But his condition affects more than his legs. 
Do the disease also affect your eyes? There's no visual impairment at all, but there's a lazy eye mm -hmm. is the common term, so yes. An obstacle that has tripped up this good doctor since he was born six weeks premature. The doctor called us in and he said he will definitely be physically disabled and may never get out of a wheelchair. He will probably be mentally disabled. Doctors would told me that I wouldn't amount to anything, that I could sharpen pencils for a living. I could tell you doctors numerous told stories. You that? Yes. When Tyler was three, he got his first walker, but he still had trouble keeping his balance. You broke bones because you fell so much Correct. as a I've, kid. I've broken almost every bone in my body, major bones from knees to wrists to ankles, all my fingers. I used to fall about four to six times a day. But instead of giving up, he kept getting up. Needing help with his own two legs, he turned to someone with That's four. Right. This is Danny, Tyler's service dog. So, so you're I'm, using his body weight to yeah. keep yourself from falling. Correct. The way I walk my body is it goes back and forth. So mm -hmm. if I use him as a counterbalance, it keeps me a little more controlled so I can go slow, go up and down stairs, things like that. Tyler says there were years growing up when the teasing was relentless. It got so bad, I would pretend that I was blind and nobody would mess with the blind guy. Tyler says he could handle the taunts from other kids, but the discouragement from adults is what threw him off balance. I had an interview at this medical school, and he looked at me and said, you will never be a doctor. And I said, why? He said, because they won't come to you. Did you start to rethink your commitment to becoming a doctor? I will tell you that I was broken. Broken but not beaten, he applied to a dozen medical schools in the United States. Despite having straight A's, every single school rejected him. Still, he refused to accept that patients would shun him. He just needed that degree. You did manage to get into a medical school I outside did. the country. I did. I went to the University of St. Eustatia School of Medicine on an island of Stacia. A small medical school in the middle of the Caribbean. Tyler graduated in 2011 and was surprised when a hospital back in the States was willing to take him on for his residency the kind of support Dr. Sean Murphy finds in The Good Doctor. We hire Sean, and we make this hospital better for it. We hire Sean, and we are better people for it. I could give you a list of the doctors that did believe in me, the good doctors. How in the world medical schools passed on him is beyond comprehension. That's a shame because he missed out on a rock star. Now the head of pediatrics at a hospital in Mississippi, Tyler says most of his patients are kids with special needs of their own. They've never objected to a doctor with a service dog. And as for those college advisors who told him people would not want him as their doctor. Have you ever had a single patient tell you, I don't want you treating me? Never, not once. Matter of fact, they asked for me. Without Dr. Sexton, we don't know where we'd be. We were so grateful to find him. Dr. Sexton is a pediatric god. <laughs> to make his young patients feel at ease, he wears superhero t-shirts. Do you have one of those t-shirts on every single day? Every day. And I teach kids that there's something special and that they're super. We're all handicapped. Mine, the world can see, uh, but we're all struggling with something. And my disability gives me credibility. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.